Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Tales of Gracie's F. On the last episode, we made it to Fodra and to a place known as Telos Astute, where we found out there is some life that is scurrying about, however, they don't want to meet with us for some reason. Also, this place looks dead and we still need to save Sophie, so... I say we get to exploring this area. And let's start with this very weird looking thing here. A Tempus Aeternum. Yes, that is exactly what I thought it was. What is this? It appears to be moving. A clock? Hmm, maybe not. Actually, the Overseer used to have something like this. Its presence suggests that a great many people did inhabit this location at one time. And now it's all lonely and stuff. Huh? Machines were built for humans to use. So now this one has no purpose. It's totally sad. I'd expect you to say that. I wouldn't go so far as to say machines have souls, but still. Your sentiment does have a point. Yeah, and it's a shame when something doesn't have a purpose anymore. And it just has to stay there forever, just doing its thing. For no reason. I'm making myself depressed as I say this, so uh, I'm just stop. Alright, what do we got in here? A... Bucket? A giant tub. With some natto in it. I must admit, I was not expecting to have natto, but... Sure, why not? Oh, what is that smell? Disgusting. Something must be rotting. I'll never get this out of my clothes. Ooh, yum! Somebody's fermenting soybeans! Soybeans? Why? You can make all kinds of goodies out of soybeans if you vary the fermentation level. Fermentation level? Yeah, it's a lot easier than you think it is. All it really boils down to is the amount of time you spend fermenting them. So are you saying these soybeans are going to become something else? Maybe. We should try some and see. Pascal, how can you tolerate this smell without holding your nose? I like this smell. How could... Uh, oh! Hey, to each their own. I don't have a good sense of smell myself, so... I'm not entirely sure if it would uh, affect me, either. Although, I do tend to um, get surprised by extremely strong smells every so often. Alright, what do we got here? Oh! It's a lift. Okay, well let's try second floor. God, it's just as dead as the first floor. Alright, looks like that room's blocked off, so let's try the room back here. Hello, it's getting really lonely here. Really like to find some people. Huh, another discovery. Well, I mean, isn't that mu it, that isn't much of a surprise considering we've never been here before. And it's a completely different civilization, so there's probably a whole bunch of different stuff that we don't even know. Like, what the hell's an Emerald Hope? Oh, so that's it. I think I finally just figured out what's been bothering me about this planet. What is it? I felt like something was missing. I mean, besides all the people. But I couldn't put my finger on it. And now you have? It's hard to put into words, but... See, on our world, you can sense the life in any living being, even monsters. But the monsters here aren't like that. They lack a certain spark, I guess. I get what you mean. I think we've all felt something similar ever since we landed here. Plants and animals or any other kind of life form barely exist on this planet at all. I guess that must be why this is here. Yeah, it makes sense that the people who once lived here wanted to preserve any kind of remaining life. I can't imagine what they must have gone through. Our world is so full of life. Being here makes me realize how much I take it for granted. I guess all we can do now is to honor the past and make sure the same mistakes aren't committed again. We have to make sure Athenia doesn't suffer the same fate as Fodra. Hmm. Emerald Hope. Now I get it. Yeah, we haven't seen anything green in terms of plant or life ever since we got here, huh? But 
it's kind of off-putting, you know? And hey, you can see our world right there in the background. Jesus, it's a long way away. Uh, doesn't look like there's much else here. Hmm. Okay, let's try the basement in that case. But yeah, it's true. You do take life for granted. All of the good things that we have. You just end up not thinking about it after a while, and every so often you need something that just... You know, gives you a little reminder, you know? Well, there's an actual person. Which is, the, which is a first, however... I want to see if there's anything else around here first. Oh, I see a sparkly! Let me get the sparkly. And it's... Seeds! Huh. Well, if that, that... That must mean there at least used to be life on here, right? Because if there are seeds, that means there were plants, because where else, where would they get the seeds, unless they, like, created them themselves or something. Apparently this brings us to the shuttle bay? Screw it, let's go! Um... Hello? Um, well, there's no shuttle. Ah, oh, damn it! And now there's a password protected uh, chest. I believe this is the one that has the really harsh word that you really only hear twice throughout the entire game, and I think this is it. Uh, you may uh, oh, was it fossilos? It was something like that. It's the word that Asbel says during the anime uh, cutscene as they um break through the atmosphere of this planet. And it's, like, mentioned twice throughout the entirety of the game. It's Fossellos? I'm gonna try Fossellos. Let's see if that gets us anywhere. Crap. It might be Fossillos. But other than that, there's not much here. Wait, or am I thinking of the next treasure chest? No, wait, hang on. This one might be the other wi wi um, uh, harsh one. Hang on. This one might be the other planet, which is the one that Asbel just mentioned, which is their home planet. Uh, Ifinia? Ifinia. Yeah, that's it, right? Crap, how do you spell Ifinia? Is it EA or... Uh, crap, this is why I hate spelling. Um... Ifinia. Come on. Yeah, there we go! A spellbook that halves all of your stats except accuracy, but doubles the amount of experience you earn. Hot damn, that'll be good for grinding. Goddamn spelling of words that are made up. Alright, now that we sorted all that out, how about we go speak to the life that we have been ignoring thus far? I'll tell you what, um, person. No, 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 no! Don't go away! I, I, I was just saying that I wanted to meet you, because I don't know if... Wh wh where everyone else is. What's going on with that machine? I don't know, but it looks like someone's in it. Oh yeah, that's a person. It's a person! She's not breathing and she has no pulse, but I don't think she's dead. What, so it's like hibernation? Oh crap! Have we induced the wrath of God on this planet? That'd be really inconvenient.
Did you bring these people here, Sai? She is alive. Um, hello. And who might you all be? Oh, you know, just decided to pop in. My name is Asbel Lant. My friends and I came here from a different world. Well, if you're going to be blonde about it. A different world? Do you mean Ephenia? Does that mean the seal has finally been broken? Ephenia? No? How odd. Then how, may I ask, did you arrive here? We flew here in a shuttle created by my ancestors. Although it kind of broke when we landed. <laughs> I see. So you must be an Amarcian. That's me! But how do you know about the Amarcians? Is there some kind of connection between us and Fodra? There is, yes. So are you, a uh, Fodrin? Yes, I am. My name is Emerod. Forgive me for not making introductions sooner. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I'm just very glad that Fodrin isn't sort of like an offensive term, you know? That would have been very, uh, bad. Also, what's this connection between the Amasians and you? I never dreamed that I might one day speak to people from Athenia. Ephenia must be their name for our homeworld. I appear to have been asleep for quite some time. Do you know how long exactly? Around a thousand years, I believe. Whoa, that's quite a power nap. Holy crap! I had planned to awaken when the chaos on Fodra subsided. I had no idea it might take this long. I'm sorry to be so forward. But we have an urgent question. Do you know this girl? That's Protos Hayes, is it not? It also appears to be malfunctioning. Did you bring this all the way from Athenia? Uh, she's sick, not malfunctioning, but yes. What do you mean, malfunctioning? Could it be that you don't know about Protos Hase? Protos Hase is not a human being. It is an artificial humanoid soldier created by Fodrin scientists. Humanoid? Constructs that resemble people, but are not. Not people. That would explain why she didn't age during the seven years she was missing. Well, I don't care. She's still Sophie. She's still our friend. Sophie is sick, Emerod, and we came here to find a cure. Damn right, Asbel. Do you know a way to treat her? Protos Hayes is equipped with a self-healing module, but... Hmm, yes. That seems to be malfunctioning as well. The damage is quite severe. Could it have been Lambda? This unit can be repaired, but we must take it to the Humanoid Research Center. However, the center had been overrun by monsters even before I went to sleep. I imagine it's much worse now. Ah, uh, you never know. A thousand years is a long time. Going there will put your lives in grave danger, and Protos Hayes will be unable to defend you. Ugh. You know what? I think we'll be fine. Wasn't exactly an easy road to get up here, you know? Also, even if you reach the center, there is no guarantee that its equipment will still function. That is also a very good point, but we have a tech go, so I'm sure we'll be fine. It's quite possible that this unit is simply beyond repair. Like I said, it'll be fine. No. Knowing all that, are you still willing to risk your lives for Protos Hayes? Yes, Sophie's our friend, and we'd do anything to save her. Very well. 
In that case, I will not attempt to dissuade you further. There is a machine in the research center that should be able to repair this unit, although I do not know if it still functions. However, you will be unable to operate the machine without my help, so I will accompany you on your journey. We appreciate the help. I will also see that your shuttle is repaired in the meantime. Psy, please get the shuttle to the launch bay and see that it is fully repaired. It would not do to have our guests brave the research center, only to be stranded here in the end. The shuttle's in pretty bad shape, so feel free to whack it around or whatever. Thank you, Emerod. You've already been a tremendous help. Yeah, you're being exceptionally kind right now. Yes, well, I suppose we should be off. Yeah, let's go. Huh. Been asleep for a thousand years. Jesus, that would make your muscles go to hell, wouldn't it? Also, we got Kratos' card. Hello there. The humanoid is silently staring into space. Well, you keep on doing that. You're doing a good job, I, I guess. But yeah, Emerald has joined us in the party. Although she's not a actual party member that can battle, so... She's just here in spirit. And also, now that we've spoken to her, it seems all of the humanoids... ...have, um... ...decided to show themselves. Weapon... East Droid... The Proto Ace. Guess he's trying to say that a long time ago, Proto Ace was destroying Lambda, or Lambda was destroying Proto Ace. Hmm. Anyway, now if we go to the second floor, there is a new thing that we can now access if we talk to one of the um, humanoids, and I can't remember which one it is. I believe it is... Okay, come on. Should be around here somewhere. I think it's one of you two. Hello. Okay, well, it's not you. The work of a fiend. Here we go. So, this is a... Um, this is a humanoid that lets you buy titles. But... They don't, um, um, they don't, uh, unlock any of the titles that you can unlock yourselves. These are actually titles that you have to buy. So if you want to basically get every single title, you're gonna have to come back here and speak to this humanoid multiple times because each time you buy a title, um, it gets more and more gradually expensive and it gets very expensive towards the end. So I'll try to grind as many titles as possible, but, uh... It might be the case that I won't be able to get all of them before heading off, so... Yeah, I might have to come back. But, I'll give it my best shot. Now, before we leave, if we head on over to the save point, we have another character skip. Emerald, are the humanoids we see strewn about here also Protos Haste units? They are similar, but fundamentally different. These are Elith-powered, civilian-use humanoids, just like Psy. So the ones that can fight are called Protos Hastes? Is? Strictly speaking, that is not correct. When we reach the laboratory, you'll understand. Wow, Emerald. You know stuff even Pascal doesn't. It makes me really confident that you can help Sophie. I assure you that I will. Man. I wish I had the gumption and willpower to just help random people that randomly wake me up after a thousand years of sleeping on this decrepit world that is ravaged by chaos. You're a pretty strong-willed woman, huh? Anyway, let's head on out. Hello there, you doing your job? Preserve mankind hopes bridge gap between protect Precious. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, jeez. It's really awkward trying to speak to humanoids that don't really have a good sense with conversation. 
So I'm going to take a wild guess and say that we need to go over to the other warp point on the other side, which is right over here. Man, you humanoids are all over the place now that you've decided to reveal yourselves. Did you just sort of hide between the rocks or something? This is the Humanoid Research Center? I will warn you again. If you value your lives, please use extreme caution while inside this facility. I just hope their machines still work so we can help Sophie. Come on, let's get inside and see. Right, let's do it. So quiet. All I can hear is my heartbeat. But I'm still alive. Trust will only betray. Hope will only disappoint. We must remove all hope and return it to the planet. To the planet's soul, Lambda. Alright, before we head on to, into the humanoid research facility, we got another character skit. Sophie, are you hurt? Do not worry, it is fine. It is not suffering per se, merely reacting. Reacting? Protos Haste is sensing the movements of a dangerous being in your home world of Athenia. Wait, she is capable of such a feat? Yes, this is what it was designed to do, alongside its other capabilities. Stop talking like that! Sophie is not an it! <sighs> That's enough, Sharia. Our world is in grave danger. Let's heal Sophie and get back there as quickly as possible. The way she calls Sophie an it, too, is a little bit unnerving to me, I must admit. But she's helping us out, so, you know, let bygones be bygones. Well, welcome to the Humanoid Research Center with its really pumping music. And this place is pretty huge from what I remember, so this should be a lot of fun. And hey, we got some new enemies right off the bat. We got some black slime, some shadow ropers, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Freaking black slimes. Do not shoot! This slime is not black! Uh... Animal Super's got some interesting dub choices. And apparently when they were filming, uh, they were recording that line, it took like a solid half hour for Trunks' voice actor to just say it without smirking. God, I wish I could have been in the, a fly in the wall of that um, conversation. Or of that recording day, even. That must have been quite a sight to see. But anyway, right here, we got a character skip. This wall is a little different from the walls around it. So that could mean... That it's a retractable shutter. If that's the case, then there must be a device somewhere that controls it. Yes, let's find it. So, that's hinting towards the um, gimmick of this location, and the gimmick is, first we have to open security doors, and also we need to find batteries in order to power lifts. So we're basically combining the two um, gimmicks of the previous lab-related areas, which, now that I say that, this place has a lot of lab dungeons. Like, we got the one from, from Fourier, we got the Fendel Tower, technically because there is research being done there, but I guess we didn't really go to the lab part of the tower. We got the Amarsian Ruins in Snow Shroud, which are technically a lab too, and now we got this area. There are a lot of labs. Which isn't necessarily a problem, just an observation. All right. For some demon fangs, and that's, oh, she wrote. Yes, we got a ways to go, thank you, Malik. All right. This should open up the security doors. The partition was opened. And let's go back. God, I always wondered what it would feel like to go in a warp and have your molecules scrambled from one location to another. It must be pretty, uh... 
Weird feeling. God, then there's always the problem of what if it scrambles you in the wrong location, and ugh, I don't even want to think about that possibility. Okay. Oof, nothing new there. All right. Let's try going into one of these rooms. And right here... There's a charged battery. Will we take it with you? Yes, we shall. And this is the battery for the lift. Thankfully, it's portable, so we don't have to worry about it too much. When it comes to taking up space. And wow, there's a bunch of batteries. I uh, don't think... Yeah, we can only carry one battery at a time, which is a little bit annoying, but... That's fine, we can deal with it. But before we put the battery into the lift, character skip. This one won't move either. However, they look like elevators, so it's hard to imagine they're being controlled externally. The devices in front of the elevators don't seem to be active. Perhaps if we set something into them... Leia, you mean like a battery? Alright, sweet. Now, before we go in the lift, how about we take our another battery with us? Because that would be probably very useful. There we go. Alright. Up or down, where will go? Only the video game knows. It, it's down. It, it, the answer was down. Okay, right, so I'm going to go right, which is actually kind of helpful for keeping my sense of direction up. And in here, we got a sub event, but also a monster! Alright, now we got that monster out of the way, let's check the sub event. This unit looked like, it looks like it's still functional. Ooh, let me see! Yep, still ticking. You know a lot about these things, little bro. I studied them extensively in military school, among other subjects. I had to be top of, uh, be the top of my class. Is that because you had to represent for the glasses wearing crowd? Are you seriously making jokes about my eyewear? No, it's because I considered being anything of that. Ugh. Let me try that again. No, it's because I considered being anything other than number one was utterly meaningless. Although... Yeah? When I think about it now, it's almost funny. What is? At first, I worked hard to please my adoptive father. Later, later it was to get back at Lant. Because they sent you off to be adopted? Exactly. I struggled to accept the truth of my adoption at first. But once I did, I was furious at Lant. And my father, they were all I could think about. Ha, it's like they say, mother is the necessity of invention. Um, yes, however, I'm not quite sure that applies here. Although, I admit to being quite shocked when I came back to Lant. How come? Once I came into power, I saw just how difficult my father's job was. Lant's political position has always been quite precarious, after all. So, why didn't you quit? Honestly, I don't know. I guess I wanted to prove to the world that I could do the job. So you could have revenge and stuff? I don't think that was it. And I don't think it was because Lant was my hometown, or that it was an important strategic point for Strata. I think it was just testing my own heart. Hmm, maybe it's something even more basic than that. Like what? <laughs> I can't tell you. That would totally ruin it. Why's that? You understand in time, don't worry about it. If you say so. Wow. Weird to think that Pascal is the one out of all of them who is giving him advice. I'm just gonna discard those grape gels just because I want to open that treasure chest and have it count. But yeah, that's very not in character of you, Pascal, giving actual good advice. Hmm. Well, maybe a bit a little bit too harsh. She does she does give a load of good advice. Anyway. Ah crap, intersection. Um Right, well, rule of thumb says that I got to Okay, so there's a teleporter there, so let's not take that because I wanna sweep the floor first. 
All right, just go past you. I swear to God, if there's an elevator down here. Okay, no, it's just a room. Perfect. Oh God. Whew. You scare a guy, why don't, why don't you? Okay, we've got the Spook of Exchanging. The spell book that halves the amount of gold you earn, but restores a proportional amount of elf. Eh, I like my money, though. Because, you know, capitalism ho and all that. Man, I should really play that game again. What was it called? Racine? It's the, it's the game where you play as a, um... As a shop merchant. Um, for an RPG shop. I believe it was called Racine. Because there's a few games like it coming out now. Uh, mostly indie games. But uh, that was the original one. And I remember really enjoying it. Especially um, the dialogue and the character. There's all, there was also some dungeon crawling elements as well. That's one of those games I would like to stream one day. Just for the hell of it. But anyway. Jesus Christ sound. You having a little bit of trouble there. Oh god, every single move is happening at once. How do I cope? That's a crap. Doesn't look like there's a way forward. Alright, time to find a security panel. I must admit, I was not expecting to just get straight into this dungeon right now, but... Ah, screw it. Yeah, episode was a little bit too short anyway, so... Might as well... Stretch out it out a little bit longer since the last few episodes were a little bit short. Uh, or at least shorter than um, how long I usually make them. I like to think that I do a good length video. Like, uh, most people would say that you should go for shorter length videos if you want to get the views, but I don't know. I've never. I've never really liked doing short length um, videos. I've always liked doing really long length ones because I feel like you get more content. Also, I don't know if I want to go up or down. Uh, I guess down? Uh huh. I think. Mm, geez, there's a lot of stuff here. Mm, I think I want to go to the first floor first. Ah, uh, sorry, I know I'm backtracking, but I want to do this right, because I don't want to miss anything. Uh, thankfully, I got the two skits that you can really easily miss in this area. Um, the ones to do with um, the battery and the security door, because if you fix the security door or put the battery into the elevator before um, trying them, then you miss those skits forever, which is not great. Uh, Alright, let's see what we got. Ah, damn it, but this way's a whole bunch of thing, uh, ways also. Um, okay, yeah, okay, just go left. Just take it one room at a time, and we'll be fine. Huh, let's have got another battery. Actually, wait, no, this is the same elevator, isn't it? Did I... Yeah, I have been here. Okay, no, this is the exact same elevator. Okay, right, got it. Anyway, it was probably um, for the best that I came up here anyway, because um, I needed a new battery. All right, okay. Yeah, this goes, this goes um, to two different locations. Right, okay, got it. That's why it was confusing me. Uh, so it was a different location, but it's the same elevator going to that location, which is a little bit weird. Uh, oh shit, I went to the wrong place. <laughs> God damn it. It's a little bit annoying that, uh, I can't just go straight to B2, but whatever. Okay, so I want to go to B1, which should go straight down, and then from there, we go to B2. Right? That's how it works, right? Yeah, B2 south. Alright, let's see what we got here. So, I'm guessing I can't go left. Nope. So, let's go right. 
And behind door number one of the humanoid research facility, which isn't even door number one, is some more monsters, of course. Man, the monsters here give so much experience points, it's great. We got a rare scabbard. God, are you kidding me? There's no discovery in here? But look at this, there's all science and stuff. Uh, alright, fine. Is that better than the... Oh ho, that's way better. Physical increase, attack plus 16, and a whole bunch of more defense on top of that. Yes, please. Although, the Hyper Scabber did give me Iron Stance, I believe, so that is also really good. But, you know, buffs and all that. And hey, we got a save point. Mm, but before we go and use the save point, I believe if we go down here, here. Now after defeating that monster, another all divide. Nice. And that's it. All right, cool. And you know what? With that treasure, I think that'll be a good place to end off this episode, considering we got to a save point. So I'm going to say that this is the halfway section, or the halfway point of this section. There we go. I, I got there eventually. I did it, guys. Anyway, if you liked this episode, remember to do all that junk I keep on saying to do, and on the next episode of Let's Play Tales of Gracie's F, we'll continue through the research center and hopefully save Sophie. I'll see you guys then.